Welcome to another Adafruit Wearables Teardown. Today we're tackling the Reebok Check Light. It's a sports activity impact indicator for athletes playing football, hockey, and other sports with risk of head injury. The Check Light is flexible and worn inside a slim fitting skull cap. The indicator lights at the back of the neck light up in reaction to the severity of impact. To expose the flexible PCB, we cut away the molded plastic enclosure. Let's see what Lady Ada has to say about the engineering behind this interesting design. Okay, so now let's look at this circuit under the microscope. So yeah, here's that little battery and you can see it says 0.3 watt hour, a little lipo and looks like there's a little protection cell as well. And this is rather nice, it's a micro USB jack and it's got this plastic surround that protects it and keeps it nice and solid. It, from flexing the flex PCB, which is what's on the back here. Flex PCB is very delicate, so you don't want to rip it by accident. It's very easy to rip. The battery goes in here and it goes into a little chip that's marked LCVV. We looked this chip up and this is a part from Linear Tech. This is a dual battery charger and buck converter. So it's a two in one. You get double your money for this little chip. This takes uh, the micro USB power, the five volt in, and charges this little LiPo battery. And at the same time, it also acts as a buck converter. And that's, you know, a little additional cost to have a buck converter take the three to four volts from the LiPo battery and bring it down to maybe two and a half volts or something. But it gets you a little, just a little bit more juice out of that battery. You'll probably get maybe 20, 30% more power. Uh, there's a bunch of little LEDs here, indicators for, you know, when you've had too many uh, strikes or if the battery's charging, or if the battery's low. The microcontroller here is for microchip. You can see the little microchip logo up there. And this is a 24F64 series. So, you know, 64K of flash probably. It's reading the sensor input, measuring how much acceleration or gyroscopic motion, and then lighting the LED. So, you know, a simple microcontroller. You don't have to, you know, go crazy with like a big ARM core, but you do want to have a little bit more processing power than like a 8-bit PIC or something. Uh, and then up here you see the, the five-pin ICSP connector. This is the classic five-pin connector for programming uh, the microcontroller. Also, possibly you could use this to read the EEPROM data, which is where the uh, log data is stored. There's no separate EEPROM here. They're using the EEPROM on the chip. Save a little bit of money, save a little bit of space. Okay, so then we can move down to the buttons. And this is the on-off button. And the uh, on and off buttons are uh, capacity buttons, which I thought was very interesting. You can see if you flip it over, there's that mesh that forms the electrode capacitive touch. They don't use a separate capacitive touch sensor chip. They actually just use the microcontroller. It's very easy to use analog input of any microcontroller as a basic capacitive touch sensor. I'm not exactly sure they went, why they went with capacitive touch instead of a mechanical tactile. Uh, it could be for cost, reduces the cost a little bit. It could be for simplicity. Don't have another component that could possibly tear off of the FPC. Probably a, a choice that they tried a couple different versions and they decided to go with this. Nice thing about this is you know you, you don't have anything sticking out that could possibly irritate your head. You just have the flex PCB that acts as the button itself. So moving on down, this is the part that has all the sensors on it that actually do the, you know, how much have you twisted, how much have you been hit. And this is on a flex PCB, but what's nice is they put stiffener. So you see that this actually doesn't flex so much. It's actually more like a very thin PCB. Uh, that gives uh, the sensors a good substrate so that you know, they don't tear off by accident. This is the AGD-8, so if that sounds familiar, uh, pretty much every wearable that we've seen that has uh, motion sensing uses a gyro that's the AGD series that's from ST, the L3GD uh, 4200 or 20 series. This is actually the older 4200, which makes me think that this was actually designed maybe you know, a, a year or two ago, and they, they went into manufacture and they decided not to go with the newer version, the 20. 20 is a little bit uh, better in some respects, but probably didn't matter for their design, and if they did a lot of testing with the old version of this gyro, stick with it. Then over here we have an accelerometer, and it's, it's super small. Uh, it's, it says 3EK. Now we know that it has a gyroscope and accelerometer, and since we look through every other chip, this has to be the accelerometer. But it's not easy to figure out exactly what chip that is. And so to figure that out, we actually got our calipers, and we measured it. And it's a 2 millimeter by 2 millimeter triple axis accelerometer. And there's not that many 2 millimeter by 2 millimeter 
triple axis accelerometer. That's really, really small. So we looked up uh, what uh, available two by two um, ex millimeter accelerometers there were, and we found that this is actually a BMA 250. This is a Bosch uh, semiconductor, Bosch known for sensors of all sorts. They make really good quality accelerometers. Uh, there's even you know Arduino code for these sensors, so theoretically you could actually build this whole project with an Arduino using existing libraries. Uh, one other thing that I noticed while taking this apart is you know, there's this black goop around here. And what that is is an epoxy that they use to keep the chips in place. They really wanted to make this a flexible circuit. So the trade-off is, is that they added a step where they put epoxy around each chip that adds uh, for stability and also maybe adds a little bit of uh, you know humidity resistance. So yeah, this circuit is all uh, I squared C or SPI chips that then you can see the traces go all the way back down here to the main processor. And because it's digital, it's okay that they're going, you know, six inches, maybe eight inches down this flex CCB. So all very familiar parts, but put together to make a really cool little sensor. Put this on, stay safe. Wow, this is teeny. Okay. For this and many other teardowns, we use the Adafruit USB microscope and six-piece precision screwdriver set. What wearable tech should we tear down next? Post your suggestions in the comments, and I'll see you next time.